Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest and I've been using this Harbor Freight tire changer for about six months now. I've changed several pairs of tires with this tire changer. Let me talk about the things I do like, but mostly the things I don't like about this and give you some opinions on what some better options might be. I bought this tire changer for a few personal projects and there's some reasons I would never use it on a customer's vehicle. Let me break it down for you. This video is sponsored by Ombar Dash Cam. This is a 4K dash cam. Let's install it in my wife's new car see how it works. Driving in Utah is ridiculous. It's super dangerous and I always recommend that you install a dash cam when you can, especially in a place where there's a ton of aggressive drivers. First thing you want to do is find a good spot on your windshield to install the dash camera somewhere where it's out of view. Hey, look at that view. That's super compact. It's going to fit nicely behind the windshield. This dash cam has night vision, parking monitor, voice guidance, and loop recording. All right, there it is installed. Let me show you how great the video quality is. Thanks again to Ombar for sponsoring this video. If you like this dash cam, check out the link in the description and the pinned comment. Back to the video. Now let's go ahead and break down the different components of this tire changer and uh, the reasons that some of these things are failing, the things I don't like about it. You can see that it's not super tall, so it comes in a pretty small box. I think I paid 65 bucks for it. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's always usually between 60 and 80 bucks if you pick one up at Harbor Freight. Um, and you know, it comes in a small box, so it comes in a few different small pieces. Right off the bat, that caused a few issues for me. You can see that the legs are all different pieces, so it's hard to get those all lined up straight. Uh, you can just see sort of the quality of the product, and it's about what you'd expect for 60 bucks. I mean, you can see how thick the steel is, and you can just see even the pins in that hole were rounding it out. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the base here. You can see that it's just like a little cylindrical tube welded to a flat plate, and you can see where that plate's actually cracking, uh, where it's bending right there. Now at some point, I'm not sure if they've always done this, uh, they included that little welded square piece right there. That doesn't make it much stronger as you can see, that was still a, the main failing point for this. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and wiggle this as much as I can and show you how unsecure the base is, even though I use some really high quality anchors. So just imagine every time I have to change a tire, this thing's just wobbling around like crazy. Now this actually really bothers me because I'm not even sure how to tighten this up. You can see I put the bolts in facing down. Uh, if I would have put them facing up, I probably could have tightened the nuts, but I still wouldn't have been able to hold the bolt head. So it's a really weird design that you can't really re-secure once you already plant it to the ground. Now let's look at this little de-beating tool here. Uh, again, you could just see that the holes were rounded out earlier and the little down pieces there are really thin. There should be some sort of support in between them as far as I'm concerned. I've seen people do that online, but I just had to be super careful not to bend that. As far as I know, that's where these things fail most is that that little D-beater just will bend like crazy. Then if we come look at the top, it has this weird little thing. Um, honestly, I used it, but I'm pretty sure you don't need to have the little peg itself. In fact, that little square red thing on on top of that, that's supposed to get caught right here. That's supposed to go on top of the tire, but it's also in a weird shape where you can't really tell half the time how you're supposed to put it on and it clamps down just fine without the help of that little peg. Not to mention each time you wanna secure it, you have to unthread the little top piece about a hundred times. Um, honestly, that's something I would deal with for the price of changing tires but it honestly doesn't save that much money and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, there you can see it has some sort of little bolt in the middle there. When you put it on, you can actually tighten it down really well with the use of the pry bar. And there's the threads in that little receiving end. Now, before we talk about how much money we're saving again, let me talk about this last little piece, the little square piece under there. I'll pull it off real quick. And you can see that it's actually not flat, it's angled. So if you put it on backwards, then you'll just dig the little sharp corners super hard into your rim. 
Uh, fortunately, I noticed that before I tried changing the tire, but that's just something that I don't understand why that's not flat in the first place. It could cause some serious damage to a tire if you don't know what you're doing. And again, uh, that kind of holds it down flat. I feel like it's not the best thing, but it doesn't make sense how they're trying to use it with the pin either. All right, so here's a look at the pry bar. It has two different ends. I never really figured out how to use this end you're looking at here, uh, the little shoe bill one, but I did use the flat end. That's what I used to sort of de-beat all the tires uh, that I was working on and to put the new ones on, but not without its shortcomings. And if you can see what I mean, uh, I'm just talking about all the scratches that are on this because if this thing scratched to pieces, you know it messed up my rims. So that's why I've only used this for personal projects. Honestly, paying 60 bucks is the same amount that you're gonna pay to get three tires balanced at a shop anyways. So you might as well just pay to get your tires balanced at the shop where you buy them. Otherwise your rims might end up looking like this all for the price of saving uh, 20 bucks. If you got a four wheeler or something, maybe some small projects, UTVs that you don't mind, uh, even though UTV tires are really hard to change, you probably need to take those to a tire machine too. Uh, but all in all, if you're trying to save 20 bucks, uh, you can do it with this tool. All right, so again, I only used it twice. I said just a couple of times, and that's how the base got loose with just two times of use. Using it twice, I did save a little bit more than 20 bucks, and that was the point of doing it. But again, I can't ever really use this on a customer's vehicle, so I think it's about time to take this one out and save up for a real tire machine. Again, if you're trying to save some money yourself on maybe your lawnmower or something, give it a shot. But if not, I would just trust the tire shop. They've got the right tools that aren't gonna mark up your rims nor your tires. They're gonna put them on right without rolling any of the beads. I did rip off some of the rubber, just a little bit around the inside of that bead and that's just something you get with these machines that you want with a nice high-end tire machine. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you think this thing has any other good uses, let me know. That's what I think about this tire changer. Thanks for watching the video. If you like this video, subscribe and leave this video a thumbs up and a nice comment down below. We can donate the links in the description. I'll see you on the next episode of Roadside Rescue. Let me know what you think about this tire changer in the comments down below.